75 million years ago, much of North America is covered by a vast inland sea. On the shores of what will one day be New Mexico, there are various different large herbivore dinosaurs, many of them hadrosaurs and ornithomynosaurs. There are also plenty of the armoured and spiked ceratopsians, and during this time of year, they can be seen displaying their famous horns and frills, and by far the most impressive are those that belong to Pentaceratops. These near three-ton herbivores boast some of the largest skulls in the animal kingdom, lined with protruding spikes and a broad shield-like frill. To top it off, they have five horns on their head, making them extremely intimidating. They are also short-tempered, and often unfriendly to other dinosaurs, even gentle neighbors like Parasaurolophus. When a herd of Pentaceratops arrive in an area, almost everyone gives them a wide berth. This hostile nature is made even worse at this time of year. It is rutting season, and the males are asserting dominance. Each herd only has one alpha male, and only he can mate with the females. If other males want the right, they will have to challenge the dominant male, or break off and try and forge their own herds, which can be difficult and dangerous. Only the strongest lead the herd, and they may rule for many years. With so few of them ever becoming herd leaders, most pentaceratop males will die virgins. Today, one young male plans to usurp his leader, an aging bull with a cracked left horn. These fights rarely start with violence. The two males bellow at each other, and then when they have squared off, begin to swing their heads from side to side, while continuing to snort, bark, and honk. Neva backs down, as both males begin to flush blood into their large crests, creating a fret display that forms a multitude of patterns. The display is different in each Ceratopsian species, but in Pentaceratops, the outside of the shield goes black, and the inside red with two massive eye spots. The displays show both males are in their prime, and so there's no choice but to fight. The younger male thrusts forward, and in a flash the two are dueling. Horns lock together as each bull pushes against one another. The goal is to force the opponent backwards, or onto the ground to prove who is stronger. The forces being put through their horns and skulls are potentially bone-breaking. However, these two seem evenly matched, as Neva can seem to get an advantage. Beneath their feet, the earth is churned to mud, and the air becomes thick with the smell of testosterone. The other members of the herd begin to call out, but the two males ignore this. To them, nothing outside this duel exists. This focus is violently shattered as the old male is grabbed from behind and lurched backwards, his horns still entwined with the younger bull. Their contest has been interrupted by a pack of Bistahiva Sir, a distant relative of the famous T-Rex. These nine-meter-long hunters saw the distracted Pentaceratops, and even though the rest of the herd tried to warn of the danger, weren't able to alert the stubborn males before the lead female Bistahiva Sir grabbed the old individual's leg and began to pull. As the elderly Pentaceratops is dragged to the ground, the younger male is able to pull away and get a proper look at his attackers. The massive female Bistahevisa is leading three more of her kind. Two of them break away and begin to attack him. He displays his massive shield crest, making him look larger and fearsome. However, this is mostly a bluff. His tall crest is not very thick and has two massive holes in it, that are only covered by layers of skin and muscle. It is, in fact, quite fragile. The first Bistahevisor is intimidated by the Ceratopsian's display, but his partner is more experienced, and without hesitation, grabs the left side of the herbivore's crest and begins to pull it sideways, pulling the Pentaceratops across the ground. While the young male was struggling, the old male was in dire trouble. One female Bistahevisor had his leg and wouldn't let go, and a male was pinning him with his foot, trying to go for the neck and finish him quickly, but the old Pentaceratops blocked with his frill, though at this point he was merely delaying the inevitable. Suddenly, two of the Bistahevisors were retreating. Looking up from his prone victim, the male predator saw the herd of Pentaceratops had come to the aid of their attacked members. 
All of the herbivores' crests were bright with colour, and they let out bellowing noises. The display of so many bizarre eyes was enough to scare the Bistahivasa into retreating, and soon only the large female remained. She still held her victim, but she stood no chance against the whole armoured herd, and so reluctantly released her grip and fled after her pack. The old male had deep injuries, but he would survive. Unfortunately for him, the predator's attack had sealed his fate. He could no longer fight the younger male, and had to give the right of Alpha to his successor. Next year, he may be too old to fight again. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the most extreme looking of all the Ceratopsians, Pentaceratops. Pentaceratops was a large Chasmosaurian dinosaur that lived between 76 and 73 million years ago in North America. It grew up to 6 meters long and weighed 2.5 tons, however some high estimates put it up to 7 meters long and 5 tons. Its skull is potentially the largest of any land animal, though this is currently a matter of debate. Though its name means five-horned face, it only had three true horns. The fourth and fifth are actually extended and sharpened cheekbones that face downwards. Like others of its family, Pentaceratops had a nose horn that curved backwards, and two brow horns that arched downwards. You definitely wouldn't want to get pinned between these three horns. Now onto the crest. It had two large holes in it called fenestra, which made the crest lighter and was probably covered in muscle and skin, giving the appearance of a solid surface. The outside of the crest was covered in small triangular spines that likely were covered in keratin while the animal was alive. At the top center of the crest, was a small indent that had two spines pulled inwards facing down, giving it another identifiable trait. Along its spine it had long neural arches. These would have held strong muscles that connected to the neck, giving it the power to hold up its massive head. Since the crest was quite thin and had large gaps in the middle, the whole skull was pretty light, and with strong muscles backing it up, Pentaceratops likely had a great range of motion and could easily move its head however it liked. It had a wide, barrel-like chest with an almost humped back appearance and was held up by four rather long legs. Finally, the tail was short, even for a Ceratopsian. So what was the point of its massive head ornaments? Well, unfortunately, the payoff of having the bones be thin and light was that it wouldn't have been a great defense especially against large predators like Bistohebasur, that could have bitten pieces of the shield clean off. So it was likely used as a deterrent and display piece. It's a common theory that Ceratopsians in general could create visual displays on their crests by changing its colour. This could have been used as single mood to other herd members, intimidate rivals and even confuse predators. Since Pentaceratops had such a large area to create patterns, the bright colours or eye spots it created may have been an effective deterrent, especially if multiple members all displayed at once. Originally, Pentaceratops was only thought to have lived in the southern parts of North America. However, some additional finds in the Dinosaur Park formation in Canada show that the animal may have had a far greater range than previously thought, it's still debated whether this is a subspecies or not, however. So, Pentaceratops, one of the most extreme of the horned dinosaurs, a creature that truly pushed the limits of skull size and display. It makes me wonder if these over-the-top features may have hindered the animal in life, restricting its movements through foliage and the like, kind of like how male peacocks have trouble flying because of their massive tail feathers but it's a great example of how very different species can get, and it is also fairly well known, but more exposure is always a good thing. But what do you think of Pentaceratops? And on a side note, I hope my audio sounds a little bit better. I just got a new microphone to record with, and if it doesn't sound better, well, it may just be my voice, so I can't do anything about that. <laughs> 
Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching.